The 1900s are also known as the Industrial Revolution era, and what I'd like you to do is pause this video, go and watch the Industrial Revolution video that I've posted in your Canvas module so that you can see why it's called the Industrial Revolution era. So, you should have answered the question what the Industrial Revolution was and how did it affect clothing. Number two, the popular silhouette for women was something called the S-curve. This is very similar to what um, the 1890s transformed into where they eliminated the bustle and they had a flat front, but now dresses have this weird little S-curve. So if we look at this body, it goes out and then out and we've got that S curve. So it's really from the top, we've got a blouse in here where it's really puffy, and then the back is really big. Okay, that's why it's called an S curve. So these dresses were usually one piece. They had bodices and skirts that were sewn together at a um, natural waistline right here. And they had high boned collars, that's what this guy is right here. And they had that pouched bodice where it goes out like that and then the skirts were flat in the front and they had a very rounded hip line at the back um, and it usually hugged the hips and it flared out into a trumpet style so if we look at this it looks like a trumpet okay so that pigeon breast shirt waist that created that s curve this shirt waist was a separate blouse that came in a variety and displayed features like um, the bodice of daytime dresses. So what this means is it could come in um, very different looks. So for the first time, really, women are able to customize their wardrobe with separates, which is so, so cool. We also have something called the Lego mutton sleeve that was very popular here. If we look at this picture, we can see why it's called a Lego mutton. So a mutton is just a lamb. So really it's Lego lamb sleeve. And if we look at this, it looks like a leg of lamb. It had a very extremely puffy shoulder and it usually stayed a bit puffier to the elbow. And then it was very tightly fitted for the rest of the sleeve. Now, in 1909, right before the era actually ends, we get something called a raised waistline. So, 1909, the designer Paul Poiret created this Empire Revival clothing line, and it became very, very popular. The silhouette became narrower and grew shorter, um, so we don't have as lar long as a dress as we used to, and the location moved upward and the high bone collar was not worn. So we have something around the bust rather than the natural waistline. We see the difference there. Now pause the video, watch the electricity video. Okay, so electricity really changed the way of life for a lot of people. We're gonna move into men's fashion now. Um, the silhouette here for men stayed a rectangle. I realize I don't have that on the slide, but they wore something known as a three-piece lounge suit. So that vest and that collar and that jacket, they stayed from the 1890s. So now they have a coat, a vest, and trousers, and the trousers now have a crease down the center of the leg, right here, and they're narrower than those of the past of the business suits. This is really important to note that they started having that crease. Men's trousers still have that crease today. This is something that never ever went away. I still iron my boyfriend's pants on a regular basis so that he can have that nice crease down the center. Now, they had formal morning dress that had top hats and before World War I, the morning dress had a morning coat with tails, okay? I really wanna make sure that you know that this coat, it went down to around the knee, like right above the knee really, um, and they had matching trousers to their coat with um, a, tra um, a contrasting waistcoat and striped trousers. So they had either one of them. So they either had this coat that contrasted with stripes, like in this picture, or they matched. And a hat, a top hat, would complete the look. 
Men also had other accessories during this time. So they had four in hand, which is a standard necktie right here. They had ascots and bow ties. So men were accessorizing to look their best just as much as women were. Now they had different types of hats as well. So they had a bowler hat, which was soft felt hat with a rounded crown like this. And it was also called a derby hat. And then um, the Panama hat was a stiff straw hat with a flat crown that encircled um, a ribbon on a flat narrow brim. So very different looks here and it allowed men to accessorize in different ways. Now what I want you to do is pause this video Go ahead and click on the automobile video and watch that. Okay guys, so you watched that video and now it's really important to note what a duster coat is. So this was a long coat that was made of cotton or linen, okay? And men wore a duster, a cap with a visor, and when they were driving really fast, they would put the visor backwards so that it wouldn't get blown off, and goggles. Ladies had face veils. Green was the preferred color and their coats sometimes had a little bit more of a stylish coat, uh, cut, excuse me. So both men and women both wore duster coats and the purpose of the duster coat was to protect their clothing underneath. Remember at this time, they didn't have a lot of clothing. They didn't have a closet full of clothing. They had a few pieces here and there because it was all handmade. So it was a lot more expensive and at this time, people were getting them tailor-made to their bodies. So what I want you to do is look at these outfits and t uh, just say out loud what um, pieces of these outfits were inspired by the 1900s. So it's gonna be that Lego mutton sleeve here, the shirt waist, we've got that um, that formal three-piece lounge suit. This would be more of the morning, the formal morning dress. Look at the look at the cut on his jacket. Okay, we've got a Panama hat, three-piece lounge suit. And that's about it. I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, lecture, and I hope to see you again soon.